Welcome to Ripples from Carcosa. Tonight's cast is Alistair as Veridic, Frankie as Lady Charlotte, Diamond as Conrad, and Jackal Crossing as the Keeper. Ripples from Carcosa is written by Carlos Rios, Caleb Cleveland, and Lee Simpson. You all rest. Lord Boniface does not uh, summon you so far in, throughout the day. Um, he has sent word, however, to be ready for at any moment should he need you to return to Derek's holding. He, he will need you there. Um, so you kind of have the day to do what you want, visit the priest, wander the castle, uh, meet with guests who uh, who are coming in for the Yule's Tide celebration. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. The, the Yule Tide, um, I assume it's always like a big, a big deal, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. This is a huge celebration. People from all over the kingdom show up here to uh, celebrate. Well, of course, by invitation only. Naturally. All right. Got to keep out those uh, unwanted types. Yeah, keep the riffraff out, you know. Keep the filthy <laughs> pagans from the filthy those pagans. filthy worship. pagans that don't celebrate the Yuletide. <laughs> you know, and I we have the Normans. Mind. Well, especially the cowardly uh, uh, pagans that don't enter houses. Yes, especially those. <laughs> I've not forgotten. I will. I will keep bringing this up. <laughs> um. Yeah, I would get a. I would get probably uh, like fitted or something. I, I. I don't think we're so rich such that I would get like a new outfit every time. But um, I assume that like getting prepared would mean like. Collecting uh, supplies the best that I could. It's winter time, Yule tide, so yep, no flowers to collect. Um, but I would uh, try my best to find uh, nice sprigs of branches and whatnot to decorate myself with. Okay, um, sure. I've I've got something that might work for that. You don't have to find something in particular, but if you do, I I, I might just find something for that. Um, how about uh, Conrad? What's Conrad going to do today? Well, today, um, <clears throat> since uh, yesterday my sword saw some action, um, it needs a little bit of tuning. And, you know, quite frankly, these um, Yuletide festivities are are nice and all, but they really start to cut in to my training and my training regimen. Um, I'm on a very, you know, strict schedule, and this really blows it off. And... <sighs> So I'm, I'm, I'm working out, you know, I'm trying to, I'm getting my, my tools of the trade, shall we say, in order, sharpened and, and, and uh, perfected. Um, I'm working out a few kinks and I noticed that my reaction time with the wolves was a little uh, subpar and um, I'm, I'm working some reaction time drills just to see if I can um, improve on that area. Okay. Yeah. Going out to the, to the, to the sparring uh, grounds to train a bit. Sounds good. And how about uh, Veridic? Uh, he's just, well, I'm just going to maybe keep to myself, not really bother myself with uh, interacting with too many people, nurse my wounds, you know. Does Veridic like taste. to read? Would he, would he visit the library at all? Maybe, you know, it's that time of year to get cozy. <laughs> Whatnot. I don't see Veridic as like the cozy type. Like he just I, doesn't give me that vibe. I think if he were to is end he a up cozy in the library, pagan? No. <laughs> but if it's he the were decorating up, time. If he were to end up in the library, he'd probably just be there to stoke the fire and make sure that you know nothing goes wrong. I don't think he'd be reading much, maybe looking around at all the decorations, probably making fun of them to himself. Okay. I really, I really want cozy Derek though. <laughs> I know that would be that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Well, we'll we'll start back with Lady Charlotte. Um, having gathered your sticks, you you go to the seamstresses and and in the castle, and as you uh, as you head in, Miss Meg and Bonnie are having a conversation. Uh, it's very joyful, actually. And you you walk in and you hear them talking oh, he's a bard a true one the last of his kind i fear when we were little girls i heard him tell stories that and there was magic in his words 
my grandmother said he was very handsome when she, when she was a young maiden. And the elders used to say that Kale of the Greybeard helped save Wessex from demons and devils. And they're, they're kind of going back and forth. It's clear they're talking about this Kale of the Greybeard, uh, the very man you were sent to send an apology to for cutting down a tree. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to like chide the women, uh, that are talking like this and I'm like gonna like clear my throat and look at them and say, uh, and what is the nature of those stories that you tell about that Kale was telling? Hmm? Oh, were he, they godly tales? They were, they were fantastic tales, uh, tales of, of defeating demons, devils, and saving the world, and keeping Wessex safe from the evil clutches of the dark ones the ones that hid in the shadows the ones that came out at night the ones that stole the little children from the world uh i'm just so for my own familiarity um are these stories that come from like a christian perspective i kind of assume that kale is a, a pagan origin so he cared about the tree so much or is that not the case um you would gather that kale of would be of a, a pagan origin, yes. And that his stories would probably be of the old gods and how, you know, the old gods kept, kept people. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just going to haughtily uh, correct them and say, uh, well, yes, he, he might couch them in discussions that we are familiar with, but do not let his honeyed words betray his true pagan undergirding. Uh, do not let yourself be swayed by sweet words. I mean, isn't that how your daughter became pregnant in the first place by some honeyed words by a huckster? Lady Charlotte, that's not even nice to say about him. He was a good young man. Too young by half. By some standards, yes, but others not so. And in some villages, it's been known that that, that that is a quite respectable age to become wed and have children. Now... Is there something I can help you with, with your sticks and stones there? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just going to go, yes, I need your help in assembling my outfit for the, the Yuletide. Oh, it would be our pleasure, Lady Charlotte, and you can kind of... Uh, I will shall fill you with more wisdom along the way, I am sure. I can't wait. And they they kind of look at each other and with the knowing look of, oh, here we go, we're going to get schooled by the by the new girl, kind of, you know. Miss Meg and Miss Bonnie are older, pleasant women. Um, you have seen- Pleasant by around. some standards. Yeah, for, for, you know, a peasant standard. By some villages standard, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, they will help you uh, weave the uh, the sticks and, and ivies that you have found into a dress that uh that will well i'm, I'm thinking maybe uh it could be like wreaths that i like give to people as opposed oh, to like, okay like, that yeah. would probably be more appropriate i think to this context okay sure sure they'll help you with however you would like to uh to make the decorations perfect yeah they're my attempt at a gift i guess okay makes sense that's it for me Okie doke. Uh, let's see, Conrad. Indeed. You spend the morning out, you know, practicing your swordsmanship um, and whatnot. You feel like you have figured out what went wrong and, and uh, getting a bit hungry actually uh it all this all this working out has just made you hungry as usual um so what what would you like to do there after you're working out your your sword smithing your sharpening find yourself around midday well it's uh it's time to uh to grab a quick nosh uh <clears throat> you know the uh the body and mind are uh, are a temple and uh, you have to uh, treat them accordingly. Otherwise, they will not perform to, uh, to uh, maximum uh, potential. So um, I will look for some um, 
uh, some some food. You know, I'll I'll, I'll make my way to um, how, are meals communal. Um, how are they usually done? Um, there would probably be food out throughout the day at this at this place since guests are starting to arrive. There would be food all over the castle. Um, you know, in different rooms, you could find a meal pretty easily. Excellent. So there's, it's basically buffet style. Yeah. Um, I will, um, I will search around um, looking for, um, uh, let's see, this time of year, um, some late season preserves, um, some honey, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a rasher of, of bread, um, some cheese, and um, uh, a nice a nice uh, hunk of uh, cured dried meat. Okay, sure. You're able to to stuff your pockets and your belly, and uh, have enough for the afternoon. No one seems to think twice or look at you oddly as you are cramming food in your face and in your pockets to save for later. So um, I will take a small hiatus from my training here and um, sort of wander around the castle and marvel at some of the uh, preparations that are being made, the decorations that are going up, you know, check on the crowd, see how the crowd is, is doing, uh, see if I can spot any, uh, um, any sign of uh, potential, um, troublemaker shall we say any uh, any ruffians uh, amongst the group you know i start playing the mind game of um uh that one's got shifty eyes and uh, i bet you that one's hiding something you know under their <laughs> tunic right on yeah and as you wander the castle you you find yourself uh catching a cool breeze from a a, a doorway a spiral staircase heading down uh it's kind of interesting uh it's cool and and damp find yourself there at this opening uh, obviously i will go down and investigate fantastic that's wonderful news um <laughs> as you travel down said spiral staircase into what would probably be the basement of the castle uh the chill of winter quickly becomes apparent and frost grips the cold stone of the walls. Rats scamper away from any illumination that you may carry with you. Um, and soon you enter a small room off the main corridor, opposite the wine cellar. Uh, you hear giggling and laughing coming from inside the, the wine cellar, but you, you figure that might be best left alone. Um, does it sound like... um? Lady Charlotte, by any chance? No, actually, it doesn't. No. Ah, okay. Um, in this cluttered alcove, in this cluttered alcove, uh, there are several tables, and bookcases filled to bursting with scrolls and journals, uh, records, documents uh, of what looks like over a couple hundred years old. In the corner, you see Veredic sitting in a chair with his feet up, just trying to look as if he can't be found, trying to once and for all be away from everyone. Um, these, uh, some of these documents are in crates, labeled and numbered. Perhaps they were once stored somewhere else, but now they're just kind of haphazardly uh, crammed into every nook and cranny of the room. I'll take a moment and investigate the documents, see if I can figure out a little bit more about what they are and <clears throat> why they're here, you know, ponder how they got here and, and what is the purpose of this room and all of those, you know, big life questions. Yeah, sure. Um, this first, first thing that you notice, this room is obviously too small for all of these records. Um, some of the books piled on damp stone floor and a lot of what's here is, damaged by mold or just water damaged and unlegible but make me a library use role absolutely Ab interesting absolutely 
while while you're making that uh verdict you see conrad come in and start kind of poking around the room shuffling boxes what is your reaction uh i'm going to sit up look over uh probably uh weigh my options and just kind of sink back into the chair just give up pull your fur cloak up a little bit further around yeah just curl up maybe try to hide a little bit maybe pretend to be asleep okay I rolled a 69 out of 5 oh well that's uh it's the magic number but in this case it doesn't really help you um most of what you see is just moldy and unlegible illegible uh it's from what you can tell, these were these are records of probably two centuries of history of Sherborn, all the way back to the pagan days, long before it was under Norman control. Um, just land deeds and all these records are in English, however. All right. Um Is Veridic sitting in a chair? Yeah, I would say there's a yeah in a chair. Um, I'll work my way over to the to next to Veridic, and I'll um kick a leg out from under the chair, and um <clears throat> go Veridic, what are you doing here? My uh, God, man. Uh. 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 Uh, shouldn't you be out training after the way you performed with those wolves i don't need training i'm not in training i've no need for it Uh i'm allowed to rest after fighting wolves and coming back with many a wound that need tending to mind you yeah i what was up with that how did you get I'm surprised that you let those wolves attack you the way you did. I could not figure out what was your plan by allowing them such such strong purchase upon your body. Beasts are unpredictable things. There was no plan. Do you think every battle has a detailed plan before we go into it? There are ideas, but... But clearly they have an ideal outcome, and I cannot come for, think of anything um, that involved, I don't know, getting my leg gnawed off by a wolf as part of a battle plan? You are someone who has seen very few battles, and it is quite clear to me. That may be so, but I was surprised that you weren't even able to get a single hit on those wolves, and yet I was able to dispatch them so quickly. Distractions are powerful tools. We should take a look at that sword of yours and see what condition it is in. If you'd like, you're welcome to it. I'll and... I'll uh, I'll pick up the pick up the sword and inspect it. Yeah, it's definitely a sword. Uh, it's in. It's definitely a sword. You do know that, uh, and it's uh, in it's in good condition. Doesn't look like anything's wrong with it. it. Actually, feels kind of pommel it a little bit. It feels really nice. I'll do a couple of you know swishes and and you know a little sword play with it and and such and um, <clears throat> I'll uh, um, let's see here. I'll uh, swing the sword behind my back. Um, spinning it around and and catching it on uh, as it as it wraps as it spins around my hand basically and catch it around and bring it back around um and bring it up to uh to Veridic's cheek and tap Veridic on the the cheek of the with the flat part of the blade and go yeah, it's a nice sword it it does not explain how you were unable to get a single hit off hmm Your and I'll resheath the sword doing 
I'll resheath the sword and 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 hand it back. As as you go to to resheath it, go ahead and um, I'll I'll give you the flourishes and whatnot. But uh, go ahead and make me a dex times five. After all, you're fresh off your training, so you're you're feeling quite dexterous at the moment. Um, thirty one out of sixty. All right. Yeah, you managed to to get the sword in the sheath, and as you just swing it around to to hand it back to Verdict, you knock over a crate, and and papers just come fluttering out of it all over the place. <clears throat> um, I'll pick up some of these papers, and and you know. Be intrigued by, by this, uh, and go ah, a sign, and um, <clears throat> reach down and and uh, pick up a couple of the papers and and unscroll them and you know hold them up and and do the old you know in and out in and out kind of thing and and try to make uh, heads or tails of the uh, of the first scroll that I pick up or paper that I pick up. Sure. Um, one, two, or three. Pick a number. Um, two. All right. Um, this is a page from a long, a longer text. It's dated forty-two years ago, and it's titled "The Sacred Oak." From a history of Wessex. Uh, and other treasures our kingdom held as well. Chief among them was the great silver oak. Since the time of the sons of Mill, the Druids had held their college beneath its sacred boughs. All of history and myth, poetry and song, all that dwelt within the spirits and minds of men had been spoken before that tree. From generation to generation, bards were housed within that sacred oak. Darker things, too, were whispered there, secret rites and songs, riddles to combat the dark gods that slept in the sunken places and pushed against the veil of our world. Did I lose you guys? Uh, I think you're, you're... Vederic, read this. <clears throat> and I hand the page over to Vederic, and I reach down and I grab the next page from the from the crate and, uh, and <clears throat> uh, you know, do the old hold it up to the light kind of the thing, what dim light there is in this room. Uh, sure. I'm just going to hold it. And... I, I have read these before. Why, why have you thrown this at me? Wait, you you have known this? Yes. This is not my collection, but it is one that I spend time in. Do you think I would sit in a room purposefully hidden and only spend my time here sitting around? Please. Well, to be honest, that's certainly what it looked like. It's and I couldn't so figure it out. Well, yes, it's pagan nonsense. Well, yes, yes, it is that. But it does not explain what is going on with the Great Oak. Of course it does not, because you do not see anything as holy or sacred unless it's emblazoned with a cross in the photo of your martyr. Well, yeah. Can't but of course, to you, how can I explain to you that this thing that you all cut down is holy as though those texts you hold and you you worship so those little idols, what are they called crucifixes? those things that oak was like that for us well. Then why did you let it get cut down? Because we assumed, and we made, we made agreements that it would not be touched. However, agreements, especially in houses as large as this one, get lost quickly. 
I'm not shocked that it was broken. More disappointed. Well, what should, what should we do about this? None of the answers I can offer you would be ones you would be open to using. Yeah, I know about all this tree shit. I just didn't tell you guys. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of, as you, yeah, as you look down at this other document that you're in your hand, kind of starting to tune Veridic out as, you know, your youngness is, uh, is, kind of your curiosity. That's what we'll say. Your curiosity gets the best of you to look at this document. Um, and tell you what, why don't you, if you don't mind, read that one for us. If you're comfortable doing so. That is. Saxon proclamation. From an account of the weeding fest of Elspeth, daughter of Halamund, the just dated about 40 years ago. Um... Upon the wedding fest of Elsbeth, daughter of Halamond the Just, was Kale Greybeard called called forth. <clears throat> was Kale Greybeard called forth? Therefore, before the gathering Saxon lords, did Halman swear an oath to the age Mangus. In gratitude for a life of sacrifice and valor, forever protecting these lands against the dark forces that stalk the steps of mankind, I pledge that so long as you live, the sacred silver oak shall live with you. And Kale was <clears throat> pleased and gave thanks to the Lord. Brother Simon, the Christian priests did caution the Lord on honoring such a pagan practice, warning him that such beliefs were the work of the devil. <clears throat> Words passed in private between the priest and the Lord. When done, the priest was silent. Huh. Looks like, um, looks like this, uh, silver oak thing, uh, was a big deal. As I've been saying. Well, what else do you have to say? Here, I reach down, I grab another page and hand it to her. What does this one say? For him. <laughs> it's just a land deed. That one has no of no consequence to the story of, of to what you're talking about. I'm no druid. Do you want me to explain things like this? I just know of these things. I've read these pages a few times. I. This is not even about the oak. It's a deed. A deed to what? Land. Do you not know what a deed is? Is this the deed to the land that the oak was on? Maybe. I don't know. Whose land was it? Likely ours. <clears throat> you have the deed in your hands. I... I... Does it really matter to you this much? It could be something important. How would we know? I appreciate your tenacity. But really, these are matters far beyond our being. I'm going to go back to taking my nap. <laughs> I suggest you busy yourself with other matters. I would suggest you take a moment and head to the practice fields with me and uh, work out some of those kinks on that, um, that slow draw speed you have there, old man. You're... um. 
you're uh, getting a little rusty, if I do say so myself. Perhaps it's um, it's all the cheese. About that time, a small little chunk of half a eaten wheel of cheese falls out of Conrad's pocket. Pocket. I bend down, pick it up, and take a bite out of it. Meanwhile, upstairs, uh, Lady Charlotte is with uh, ladies Meg and Bonnie. Well, they're not titled ladies. They are just little old ladies. Um, And they're about wrapped up with your wreath making and, and any other gifting that you'd crafting that you'd like to do. And- yeah. And, and while we're crafting, I do want to kind of like question them about the stories that were told. Um, and I'm kind of looking for the specifics and I will be very highly annoying about it, but I, I do want like the stories um, in character. The reason being that I kind of want to know what the lessons that the bard is trying to teach. And then I want to like recontextualize them within a, a Christian context. So um one of them uh tells a story while they're while you're making you ask to, to to tell stories, right? And one of the stories that you get is um a, a retelling of of something that happened. And she says, Oh, it was probably 60 years ago. I was just a little girl, and this is Miss Bonnie that's that's talking now. She says, and the old the old bard, Kale the gray beard, he came to the feast. Uh, of of the wedding feast of Halamon, the son of Tilbert. Yes, indeed, it was about 60 years ago. And a place of honor was set at Lord Tilbert's high table. At the Lord's behest did Kale tell tales of heroes and gods and of their fair folk who dwelt in the lands beyond the veil. Some called for tales of Kale himself, for it was said that in the time when our grandfathers were young, Kale of the Gray Beard was a powerful defender of our people, that he battled demons from beyond our world. But the bard would not speak of himself, saying that such stories should never be told, and the less our people know of those old ones, the safer our kingdom will be. It was quite odd, they said it, he refused to tell stories of the old the old gods and the old ones and the dark battles that he himself fought, but told many stories of the gods and heroes. Oh. And uh, that was Kale the Greybeard then. Yes, yes. Quite a strapping young man at the time, I tell you. He must have been in his... 20s or maybe early 30s. And Kale is expected today. I would not know. I don't know who's on the guest list. Oh, I, I forgot. Uh, did they mention that Kale was coming? Or did, what was the context that they brought Kale up in? I must have missed that. Uh, no, there was a, a, a wedding feast uh, 60 years ago where Kale spoke these tales. Uh, okay, okay. So we don't know if Kale is showing up or not. I thought there. Yeah, you don't know if he's on the guest list or not. I see. But is Kale? I guess I'll ask. Is, is Kale still alive today? Well, yes. He, we heard, was highly upset that Lord Boniface cut down the tree for this year's Yule log celebration, and um, he was he was quite upset. We heard that he was not happy with it at all, and sent a letter even. Uh, demanding an apology from Lord Boniface himself, which if I know Boniface, he no way would he apologize for that. But Well, as he shouldn't for such pagan practice. Um, is there any other stories that he told? He wouldn't tell of these old ones. He wouldn't tell you of the secrets of his religious practice. No, he would never tell those stories in public. He said they were far too dark and sometimes just speaking the stories could bring them to life i am uh, going to look on with great suspicion and say well content your heart to know that this is a christian land and such pagan stories need not concern you anymore strike it from your heart sister i, I think it is for the best 
Perhaps. We hope you're right. No, no. I'm gonna like I'm like gonna get mad and say, no, there is no perhaps here. Are you saying, sister, are you saying perhaps because you doubt my word that God the our great father above all is the true and that this pagan need not be heeded? Is that why you say perhaps to me? Of course not, my lady. Of course not. I would never doubt you. Of course not. Please forgive me. That's it's... I'm gonna I'm gonna be slightly shitty. I am I'm gonna strike her. I'm like if she's gonna doubt, should talk God like that and say perhaps like I don't know. I feel like I like get up and like and then i just like like straight across the face. Yeah, like, you probably yeah yeah. Char Lady Charlotte probably would do that. She is that <laughs> kind of you know. I don't think that's how she's written, but that's how I'm playing her. So yeah. you know. cool. Like condolences to the adventure writer. <laughs> They're like, oh God, he's taking Charlotte off road. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think I think it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I would definitely like Stryker for like saying like perhaps to something like that. Like even even just that like slight underhanded. The uh, underhanded um, dismissal of your faith. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, ostensibly um, her faith. She's a Christian, isn't she? Or um, should be, I guess. She should be being that she's working in. But you know that. Yeah, yeah. The pagan faith still runs deep in the older generation, and these are of the older generation people. So, um, yeah, I guess I would just like, I would strike her and I would be like, don't you dare say such words in my presence. And blessed you never say it in the front of somebody who is more capable of violence than I. Blasphemer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miss Meg runs over and, and, comforts Miss Bonnie and says, there, there, we, we meant no no foul by it. Please, Lord, Lady Charlotte, um, please tell not Lord Boniface of our misdeed and, and we, we shall repent. We'll go and see the priest immediately and repent. Uh, please accept my personal apologies. See that you do that, I say, as I like gather up the reeds and like strike it, strike out of there. Uh, with the intention to follow up on the priest later that day if they do not. Yeah. Um, as you open the door, there is a a herald outside uh, looking a bit nervous and shaken, uh, probably overheard what just happened on the other side of the door. And he says, oh, uh, uh, Lady Charlotte, yes. Um, could you please gather your companions? Uh, Lord Boniface would, would like to see you all in the feast hall. Slightly confused for a second. I think Lady Charlotte would be like, that those, they are not companions of them. Oh, oh, uh, yes, the rest, yes. I shall go get, gather them. Thank you, my lady. And I also make Lord Boniface know you're, you'll be arriving shortly. And he turns on his heel and trots off down the hallway. Uh, the smell of spruce boughs kind of starting to fill the the hallways now as the decorations are being fluffed and banners hung uh you have yeah. no idea where verdic and conrad are like trusting in god i'm going to start wandering in a random direction <laughs> trusting in god yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> downstairs conrad uh verdic kind of pulls his cloak over and is ignoring you and your taunts of of old man get to work uh what what do you do with your wheel of cheese and and this new knowledge that you have gained of the, the silver oak. Well, I take out my knife and I <clears throat> cut off a wedge of the cheese. I set it down on the table and um, I take uh, take the page from the, um, uh, of, about the oak with me and um, um, I head out towards the uh, practice fields because clearly the only thing that will clear my mind now is some good proper exercise. Yep, belly full. It's time to work out. Yep, Indeed. makes sense. Um, along your travel, yeah, towards... heaven, heaven knows I love to work out. Just like a full belly, just like right? yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> I like... just chug twenty four liters before I like go work out anytime. It's my, my favorite. favorite thing to do. See how we tied the pre pre uh, yeah yeah conversation the discussion. The, the viewers won't see, yeah, and won't get to know about. That's right. Um, maybe, maybe we'll save that footage for, uh, the Patreon. <laughs> <group>. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> if you want to see the side chatter about uh, working out in Minecraft, uh, tune in, pay for the Patreon. Uh, tiers include <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, behind the scenes, look, et cetera. Um, Conrad, uh, you turn a corner and narrowly just run over Lady Charlotte as she's walking down the hallway. She's you, you run into her, nearly knocking her over. So I'll, what I'll do is as I as I collide with her, I'll reach around, grab her and do a, a spin around and and um, uh, stand her up next to me as I continue on my way, not paying any attention to who it was that I just about bowled over. But all <laughs> I did was just take them from in front of me, deposit them behind me and keep on going. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to like kind of say under my breath, oh, God provides. Oh, oh Conrad, Conrad, uh, please, sir, stop. Your valor is required. Indeed. What is it now? Uh, we are called upon, as well as, unfortunately, Vederic, uh, to attend to our shared master of the castle. Excellent. I hope it involves... I, I, I unsheathed my sword uh, about a foot and then I slide it back in to make a nice solid clicking sound as it goes back into the scabbard. Well, for my sake, hope that it does not. I, I know that you are uh, quite skilled in such things, but they terribly frighten me to say the least. Don't worry, my lady. Um, around me, you are completely safe. Wink, wink. I certainly feel that way, Conrad. Um, do you perchance know the location of the Derek? The Derek, oh, yes, I do. Um, how to say this? Um, he has taken up residence in the basement and is currently napping away in a dusty, dank library of some sorts. And I take out a a page that I, that, you know, the the page about the the tree, and I. I handed to Lady Charlotte and said, um, have you seen this um, this uh, this document? Uh, apparently it is common knowledge and I'm the only one who is unaware of it. Well, it makes sense that Derek would be in such a place. Uh, we might need to go, we need to go fetch them, unfortunately, and go up here ahead of the, uh, the Lord of the land here and uh, uh, I shall read this along the way if you, if you feel it is of importance, Conrad. Oh, it is. Indeed, it is. <clears throat> and um, I uh, trot down the stairs quickly because nothing gives me a little more glee than the possibility of rousting Vederic again. <laughs> <laughs> like a child all excited to buy. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to fall behind you and kind of like read as I'm like trailing behind you. Sure. Yeah, y'all get down there. Veridic, you hear the footsteps come in the room as you're just nodding off to catch some, some Zs. You hear more footsteps. And as I come to the door, I do the classic, you know, kick the door in. Um, it <laughs> swings open, bangs against the wall. <clears throat> Vederic, you are needed. We are called forth. Well, I don't know about needed, but you are called. Fine, fine. <laughs> A moment, please. You've had nothing but moments since we've gotten back. Well, those were moments I chose to have. Now this is one I require. Fine. Let require quicker. Quicker. Let me gather my things. <laughs> Yes. Oh, but Derek, I learned that you can read. How happy. <laughs> I have some books to share with you that might perhaps change your mind about the, the way of the world. There are so many texts out there of, of our great Lord. My choice in text is quite selective, but I'll be sure to... Oh, I promise you the words are not that difficult. I, I think that even you will find them to be worth worthwhile reading. Sure. I'll take those books. I'm sure they'll find some use. <laughs> but, but after we go up here before the of course, case. Of course, of course. Yes, you head upstairs, uh, making your way through the 
castle. The decorations are in full swing. There are banners hung everywhere, boughs of spruce and wreaths hung over every doorway down the main hall. Uh, and as you enter the feast hall, you see the castle herald directing the hanging of banners all around the hall, each banner adorned with a different set of colors. Depictions, patterns, all representing different nobles. The noble families invited to the Yule celebration would know where they are meant to sit within the hall by gathering at the table closest to the banner of their lord. No, calls out Lord Boniface. Move Lord Andreas further up, high towards the high table. His family always brings the wonderful jester. Just then, the Lord notices uh, you waiting. Uh, he nods a greeting to you and moves to a side table to speak with you, gesturing for you to follow. I uh, I like the idea that, like, as we're having this conversation, I'm having, like, a side conversation with maybe a servant that's walking by, and I'm, like, a little bit away, and I'm like, did you know that Derek can read? <laughs> How amazing is that? <laughs> yeah, just, like, like slightly a little bit away. <laughs> kind of throwing some shade that way. Yep, makes sense. Cool. I, I feel I feel as if it's not shade on Charlotte's part. Like they're like legitimately surprised Vaderic can read in like the worst way. <laughs> oh, right on. Okay, that's even better. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, as you make it to the to the small side table, the the servant that you were speaking to passed by just like shakes their head and rolls their eyes a little bit as you walk away. You you notice it, but it you know, it's like wow. <laughs> Uh, Lord Boniface greets you at the table and uh, begins immediately. I, I'm rather disturbed by your news. And even more so since I do not know its cause. Do me this. I command you all. Travel to Dunover and Beaton. Learn what they know of this madness or plague. Take supplies and warm clothing. The quartermaster will send you with two bottles of wine to present to the heads of these villages. Yule gifts might loosen their tongues. Uh, of what has happened in Derek's holding, speak as little as possible, or, or better yet, uh, uh, speak none at all. It is a small matter to replace these peasants come spring, but a more difficult if the land gets a reputation for being cursed. Leave at once and travel with all haste. I've instructed the stable master to issue you two mounts, the sleigh, and a horse to draw it. Come directly to me upon your return. Report to me and no one else. I want you all back in time for the Yule celebration in five days. Some of my guests might inquire as to where some of you are. And he kind of looks at Lady Charlotte and Conrad and others may not be missed. Uh, but I, I <laughs> would have a hard time explaining your absence. Uh, he nods to you with a serious look and then returns to his herald and the preparations for the Yule celebration. Um, any any modest supplies that you need will be prepared, uh, given to you the sleigh, draft horse, uh, two riding horses. So um, you all have capability of carrying supplies, have mounts, and and the ability to drive them. Um, yeah, I don't need anything um, besides maybe like reading material. I would um, I would make sure my Bible is on board. That's about it. Okay. I'm going to track down a um, a spare small knife. Um, you know, something like a kitchen knife or something like that. Okay. Um, out of spite, I'm going to pack a uh copy of the poetic uh edda okay this journey fantastic um cool so it has snowed once again uh the the fresh wet snow on the ground is about six inches deep and it is going to take about probably three hours to travel to dunover which is the second closest village or six hours uh, to the furthest village of Beat. What was it? Beat? Beaten. Beaten. 
Yes, it's where they grow beets in Beaton. So uh, I guess you you gather your things, load the the sleigh, and and strike out. Indeed, no time. Um, and you travel through the snow. It it's falling lightly at first, and then more heavily and more heavily. And by the time um, you get pretty close, the, the snow is coming down pretty pretty good. Um, it's not like storm level snow yet, but it's it's a pretty solid snow. But as you approach the village, it's very clear that all is not well. Uh, a murder of ravens circles overhead in the distance, their black feathers striking against the white, bright, snowy sky. As you draw closer, you see these strange shapes littering the fields and the roadsides near the village. Some of the ravens gather around these, working hard to remove what appears to be strips of flesh. Yes, as soon as you are close enough to kind of make the shapes out clearly, you can tell they are indeed villagers, uh, all lying dead, each as naked as the day they were born. All of the corpses are filthy, their mouths, hands, and feet caked with dirt. A few of them have stomachs which are strangely distended, each body as stiff as a nail, frozen in the chill December air. Um... I think that's going to need me a sanity check there. So seeing all of this very odd people, dead people. I failed my sanity check. You're good. Charlotte's good. I'm good. <laughs> I lived a cushy life. My sanity's at seventy. Nothing, nothing's gonna. Nothing's, rock my head. nothing's gonna crack you. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> that, 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 they come that way sometimes, you know. <laughs> it may not be important, but I rolled a ninety-nine. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Very well. Um, so first of all, uh, verdict: just take one. Um, Conrad, go ahead and, uh, roll a D six for me on that. And as you're looking at these five, holy cow. Okay, man, you, you are in these five sand losses at, at once. Um, <laughs> You're just making me go to the book all the time. Well, that's the idea. But make me an intelligence roll then. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, start attacking us. Please, please, please. Just start attacking us. Take out the Derek. Come on. I'm rooting for it. <laughs> 10. Out of 65. Okay. Uh, so you... You are fully aware of just how wrong this situation is. So strikingly aware that it becomes immediately uh, to your mind that these people somehow look like they are imitating animals. They They are, some of them are in like, on their hands and feet as if they were a cow or a, a dog. It just is completely unnatural and you are quite aware of it. But Derek, look in the fields, those people, they are dogs, cats, bears, chickens, oh. squirrels raccoons what um, are they doing that is a good question and one that i don't think we want to answer conrad yes they're only peasants we all know but you don't have to compare them in such a vile way 
but can you not see them? Look, right there. And I draw my sword. You draw your sword like in defense or to point or um uh in defense. Makes sense. Even if they are imitating animals, I they are people. They do not have the strengths of these creatures you speak of. If they attack, we will be safe. Well, you notice that they're not moving. All of them are just stiff. And you see the, the ravens are picking at them, eating at them. What would cause these people to get into such positions? What would overcome them that would drive them to... To mimic, that one looks like a squirrel. That's weird. We are in Germany, aren't we? We're in Saxony, right? Yeah, uh, Southern England. Oh, we're Wessex. in Southern. Oh, we're in Wessex. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna make a joke about Germany because they say "squirrel" kind of uh, difficult, but no, we're in Germany. <laughs> so make that joke. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say, Con Conrad, Conrad, the bodies are horrific. Maybe we should move on. Indeed, but be prepared. As we are always. Well, I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to disagree with what he said. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you as you get closer into the main village, there are several buildings here. Uh, one's obviously a barn. It has some livestock pens around it. All of those pens are empty. Uh, livestock has been apparently set free or perhaps killed by these maddened villagers. Um, kind of. Bales of hay are arranged outside, arranged outside the front of the barn, and some boxes and planks are set up somewhat like a stage. As you approach and kind of ride close to the barn, uh, there's mugs of ale sitting out on the uh, benches, frozen, of course, and iced over with the snow. Um, there's discarded clothing everywhere, and hanging up kind of as a backdrop on like some scarecrow sticks kind of thing is a cloak and the cloak has painted on it that that yellow sign symbol that you've seen before not sure where you've seen it but you it's familiar to you you've seen it it it's almost like a banner waving in the breeze that's blowing But Derek, what kind of pagan ritual is this? <laughs> As I told you before, I am no druid, although this looks like no ritual I've ever seen. What would cause them to leave their ale? <laughs> that's, of course, that's the important part, right? <laughs> that's a question. And you smell smoke on the wind uh, as you kind of look around. It's it's obvious to see where it's coming from. There is but one house with smoke billowing out of the chimney. Uh, as you as you ride past the barn, though, do me a favor and uh, everybody make a listen check. I passed. Crap, what's space listen again? Uh, base listen, I think is 20, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I feel 25. Yeah, 25. Um, I failed, Lady Charlotte. You, you hear what sounds like grunting or animal noises, very primal animal noises that don't sound like actually animals coming from inside the barn. Um, I'm gonna say like a really high pitched voice. That's just like very obviously tinged with pure terror. Ha, uh, Conrad! There, there's things in there. And I'm like gonna like shakily point towards the barn. 
I'm going to ride over to Lady Charlotte and um, reach into my pocket and or into my vest and pull out that uh, spare knife that I had procured and hand it to her and say, um, I will go check. But in the meantime, you should probably carry one of these from here on out, just in case the Derek falls again. Um, I'm going to take it and then like my fear truly showing I'm going to uh, take take the Derek, take the Derek, go, go check it out. The Derek. He's we should go. Drawing we should, the spear. Right. We should investigate. Right. Yes, investigating. Yes. Yes, and as are you uh, dismounting and approaching the barn? Riding, riding over. Riding over. Uh, I think we'll dismount, or I'll dismount. I'm okay. hopping off. The Derek dismounts. Um, Conrad rides in. Both of you make spot hiddens for me. Uh, that is 26 on 75. Ooh, nice. Is that a... That's a three on 35. Okay, so uh, I think both of you got uh, extremes. You can see uh, movement inside the, the barn door is ajar just a little bit. You can see movement um, of what look like people on the all fours just... and running around inside moving you hear grunting and and suddenly a cacophony of animal like screeches and howls erupts the doors come flying open from the barn and a group of naked filthy villagers on all fours just come rushing at you barreling as if rabid animals they growl and slaver and charge towards you with lust and murder in their eyes they appear to have sharpened claws, but you realize these are not claws at all. They are sharpened tips of bone. They've worn away the flesh from their fingertips. And uh, they are charging down on you. It will be uh, combat action. Can you guys give me your dexes again, please? Uh, 55. 60. Yeah. Um, okay, you're gonna load here. <laughs> I have some amount of decks, let me tell you. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, 55, bottom of the barrel. All right, uh, we got a cool. I got a nice little cheat sheet for them right here. Awesome. Uh, cool. So the first one, uh, let's see. Conrad's on horseback. The Derek, you hopped off your horse. Conrad, you're going to be kind of ahead of Verdict because he took that moment to get off his horse. So the first one gets uh, to you, leaps towards you. Are you going to, let's see, dice, dice. I need my dice. The black and red evil ones. Evil dice. Oh yeah, nice, love it. <clears throat> he is going to uh, just kind of jump at you with these bony fingertips. Um, are you dodging, fighting back? I'm going to do two things at once. One, I'm going to take my sword and swing with my sword as I kick the horse and uh, kick it into action to flee. Oh, ah, okay. You're going to kind of flee right on. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll me that uh, 2d10 fleeing. I don't remember how. I think you have to beat their attack roll. <laughs> right? To flee. Yeah, it's not their purview. Our instructions didn't say you must slaughter all peasants you come across that are in a bloodthirsty rage. It wasn't part of our instructions. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you what'd you roll there um 17 17 um yeah you spur the horse and the horse's front hooves actually knock this attacker to the ground away from you um and your horse 
gallops backwards kind of in that nice little uh, fighting, prancing horse style, you're able to back away from this attack. Um, let's see. Verdict. Uh, It'll be your go. Uh, as, uh, as that one kind of tumbles onto its back, um, being kicked by the horse. How many are there? Uh, there are seven. No, six. I'm also going to flee. I'm, I'm not dealing with Bravely, bravely ran away. <laughs> All right, outnumbered and outgunned, uh, you both you begin to flee. Uh, they will pursue. Where are you headed? I was just gonna try and uh, grab the back of the sleigh. Okay, so Six. you're gonna just kind of run and jump on the back of the sleigh. Yep. Okay, Conrad. Yeah, what about they're, you? They're fast. They're not faster than a horse, though. I bet. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> i'm going to um <clears throat> guide my horse uh down the road and head towards our next destination recognizing that this one is infested with a whole lot of nope <laughs> all right that next destination being uh the house with the smoky chimney or no, no, no. Um, I, the next, the the next town down. I the already have more than enough, house. more than enough information about hey, hey, this guys, place. There's, there's a house with smoke, and but there's but there's like a whole horde. You guys want to check out the house with the smoke? There's a whole horde behind you, by the way. <laughs> I gotta ask to be a good keeper. I have to ask if you wanted to check it out or not. Um, we just like do a drive by. You like, oops, whip around the sleigh and lean in. <laughs> Yeah, let's just drift past it a little bit here, guys. No big deal. It's fine, yeah, totally. Actually, um, as I swing around, um, if Viderek is between me and the um and the sleigh and Lady Charlotte and the sleigh, um, and on foot, as I ride past, I'm gonna reach down, grab an arm. And try to do one of those, you know, movie style, swing them on the back of the horse kind of routines. Oh, great. That, I'm going to need you to roll a dex for that. <laughs> Not what, a ch- what's your move by chance? Um, eight. Conrad, yours is eight. Okay. Verdict, what's your move? Seven. As a note, there's not a chance. There is not a chance. That the lady is staying around the moment these these fuckos appear. Yeah, she, like, you're taking a yeah, <laughs> getting out of there. I'm not even seeing what happens to the Derek and Conrad. I'm just like gone in a, like a fucking panic. When you hear those door, barn doors crash open, you're like, nope, that's enough. Giddy up, horsey. Well, it, it's less the doors because I'm like, oh yeah, I have these two trained combatants. It could be something that they could face, but I see like seven peasants come out with like fucking bony ass fingers coming like running out like they're on all four no 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 no. that's a nope out situation right there sir yep 60 64 out of 60 64 out of 60 um and luck spend luck come on yeah you have luck or you can push absolutely i'll spend some luck (laughs) yeah yeah, this feels like a role you shouldn't fail on. Yeah, this feels like a role you need to pass. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll spend some luck. Because <laughs> otherwise, uh, it bad news be bad for Veronic. I don't want to die <laughs> again. I well, like wait, my wait, wait. If this results much. in the death of the Derek, maybe you should fail. <laughs> <laughs> I love my character so much. No, don't kill him. He's so special to me. So you, how much luck did you spend? Just four or four? Five? Yeah. Okay. Enough to pass. Very enough well. to pass. Yeah. Uh, Verdict. You feel the the you the the horse's presence galloping behind you. You feel a hand on your collar of your of your uh, cloak. <laughs> you are lifted off the ground and tossed on to the back of the horse, uh, kind of uh, on your belly. Not even like on saddle you're just thrown on the back of the horse and all you could see are these the shapes of these 
peasant villager chasing you through the snow. And as they get smaller and smaller, uh, you were hoping to make it to the sleigh, but Conrad has appeared to have saved you. Uh, had you not oh, seen the lot, that sleigh with all our supplies, please don't tell me that sleigh had all our supplies. Oh, the sleigh does have all the supplies, but you're driving the sleigh, right? Oh, I have the sleigh. Okay, then yes, 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 I have the sleigh. Yeah, I'm so glad that I have all the supplies. And I'm not on a separate horse like I'm... No, nope, yep, you're right. You're very right. Yeah, Veronik and Conrad were riding the single horses, and I thought you were driving the sleigh, nope, just based nope, on... Yep, yep. Okay. Based no on the fact that there that, were yeah. only two horses and a sleigh, and they were on the two horses, that by yep. default puts you in the sleigh. So... Um, it's a good thing that you spent the luck, though. Uh, I'll tell you what would have happened had you not spent the luck. You would have knocked Verdick into the snow and to where he would have been attacked by these, and you would have left him behind. So good thing you spent the luck. That does, like, if you knock him over at that point, that does definitely feel like, an oh, that really sucks, but I'm not getting him again. <laughs> I'm not helping <laughs> at this point. By a good deal buddy all right um I, I, I just realized one of the absurdities of the scene um just to paint that picture and that is lady charlotte who is driving the sleigh and and stirring the steed on um you know uh really going after it on the reins is dressed in her yuletide finest because she didn't change that's before we left right. that's right um Looking, looking like the uh, lady Chris Kringle there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as as the mounts and the sleigh begin traveling um, away from Dunover, um, each of you see this strange thing at the end of the path, forking away from the main road. Is it a large building of black stone? Three stories high with an adjacent tower soaring even higher skyward. It's impossible to have missed such a thing on your way in. Um, it, it dwarfs any structure in the village. Um, and the design of this building is unlike anything you have ever seen. Uh, just then, a gust of wind blows the snow off the road in front of you uh, into a cloud of ice and and as it's gone after you're blinded for a moment, uh, you blink and, well, it's just a snow-covered field, empty, with a forest beyond now. The building you thought you saw isn't there. Uh, go ahead and make me a sanity roll. As you try to make sense of what you just saw, you kind of all look at each other like, did you see that? I'm fine. <laughs> I, pa <clears throat> I passed. I passed. You all think it must have just been the shadows of the forest uh, and the snow, the way it was. It, it had to have just been a shadow. Can I can I choose what I actually believe I saw it, actually? Like, but I can still rationalize it, right? Like, uh, yeah, you can. I'm terrified of it, but, like, still justify it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I imagine this is the point where, like, I would, like, turn to the deer and just say plainly. Look, I, I know that your pagan blood may has turned you astray, but even you must admit the wickedness of the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, wicked, sure, yes. As you call anything unexplainable by your holy books. Then explain that for me, motherfucker. Don't come say <laughs> to me that, that, that I'm like fucking... Uh, like, and Lady Charlotte does not normally cuss. Don't fucking say to me that I'm just hating on your religion. Did you fucking see, did you see those people crawling around? This is not me simply hating on your wrongful ways. This is evil wickedness that even you in all of your bad blood can, must be able to recognize or for chance leave our travel at this point. Derek just turns very quickly and goes, Wickedness comes not from belief and just refuses to acknowledge her after that. If you refuse to acknowledge, I'm, I'm worked up at this point. Yeah. I'm like the nearest thing, I'm just going to chuck at the Derek. 
Like, no, you don't fuck it. I'm talking to you, but Derek, and I'm like, gonna, <laughs> whoever's nearest to me is getting chucked out of the Derek. So you're gonna throw a bottle not like, at me? Not like aggressively, because as aggressively as I can, but it's not like I have great aggressive stances here. You're but I'm like, like, toss a Bible at my head. No, I, I like I'm imagining like a pack of food or something. You know, like something non like meaningful in any way, but like I'm just yeeting something at your head. Like, look here, motherfucker. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking about belief. Did you see that or not? <laughs> Hysterics like, will get us nowhere. I just need a commitment from you that this is, that you do see this as something evil. I see or else it I need an explanation. Is... I cannot explain everything, nor do I see something and immediately assume it evil. Then how do you explain it in your pagan ways? Make sense of what we just saw. I don't know. I don't care to know. Some people don't try to rationalize everything, milady. <laughs> it seems as if it doesn't matter if you care to know or not. It is still real and there. Many things are real and there, and we care not about where it comes from. Like the snow. Where does that come from? The sky? I don't know. It simply is here. I merely wish to hear your commitment to do what is right. And an acknowledgement that it is not right for people to be crawling on all fours with bones for fingers. Yes, Derek. that is not right. Do I consider so it hard to inherent say? wickedness? No. Yes, it is hard to say because maybe I believe in the good of people. I'm not talking about them. Of course, they are obviously demon-possessed. That is not their fault beyond their mere human frailty that we all have. That is what the good Lord teaches us, that we are all weak and that the devil may influence us. I'm just looking to hear from your mouth that you are committed to destroying these things and the devil that is inside of them. God, or whatever force that you might believe in, can straighten it out, I'm sure, on the back end. I will keep you safe if we are attacked. I don't care about my, well, yes, I do care about my safety, but I care about the safety of our people as well. Your people? Yes, these are my people. I live here. A bold claim. I'm gonna throw another thing. I'm I'm just like full worked up. <laughs> like another thing is just getting chucked at the Derek's head. <laughs> Whatever is closest to hand. Not I far. live here. <laughs> yeah. Not far up the road as you're having this conversation traveling. Uh it's a small cabin. Um it's far out from from uh the the previous village. It sits all alone, uh, no horses. But there, there seems to be light coming from inside the window. It's definitely looks warm, smoke rising from a chimney. A cart sits outside, uh, old weathered cart, a stack of firewood by the door, and a modest uh, garden, probably large enough to feed two people. You can see the garden stake sticking up out of the snow. Uh, other than that, not much to say about this. It's a simple cabin. Um, the horses do look tired from your hard rant uh, run from Dunover. What time of day is it? Um, you left out mid morning, probably. No, it was uh, it was early afternoon because you had already been through lunch period with the Conrad stuffing his pockets. Um, so it was early afternoon, so it's probably getting late afternoon, early evening, almost dusk. And was there a planned location for us to, like, it's a multi-day trip to this location we're heading to, right? Um, it's going to take you probably another okay. three to four hours to get there. It will be full on dark if you continue pushing. I mean, I, I'm pretty worked up and I'm pretty mad, so I'm gonna, I'm like not even gonna notice the building, I think, but out of character, I 
like if we investigate here, it's probably going to eat into our time. So um, I, I leave it to Conrad to maybe notice this because I won't. Um, <clears throat> as we come up to the um, to the cabin, I'll uh, I'll veer off and uh, head on over and investigate. Knock on the door, see if anybody there knows what's going on back in the hamlet we just came from. Sure. As you approach, uh, there is a a rope on on the door, and not uh, as you knock, there's no response, and then then you look and see this this rope kind of hanging. It says uh, ring bell. Uh, note ring bell. I don't see any bell, um, so I'll pull the rope. Yeah, you pull the rope and hear what you can only characterize as probably a, a small church bell. There's a, a pretty loud gong sound. Uh, the two of you, Charlotte and Verdick, also hear this. Um, a few moments later, you hear the door uh, handle jiggle uh, and the door opens widely and staring back at you is an old woman, a leathery face. Um, she's hunched, uh, definitely very old. <clears throat> and she looks at you. Yes. Um, I am Conrad and I am, uh, on our, we are on our way to um, insert name of village here. Um, beaten. <laughs> beaten. Uh, um, we are beaten a path to beaten, and uh, the uh, the time has gotten away from us, and we fear we will not be able to make it before nightfall. Again, and she kind of points at her ear and <laughs> leans a little closer. I said. <laughs> we are trying to get to beaten. This isn't beaten. It's that way. <laughs> Did you come from Dunover? Yes. It's done over. My grandson went to Dunover. He was supposed to be back today. <clears throat> I don't think he's going to make it today. Do you want to come in? It's cold. Yes. Lady Charlotte and I whistle, you know, the real loud whistle. And, and you know, you can see that the horse is you know, catches their attention <clears throat> and they, they, they slow for a moment. And, uh, I, I call lady Charlotte over, um, and, uh, Videra can say, uh, we've got a room for the night. Come on. It's better than this cold and blasted snow. And it'll do the horses some good to rest. I'm going to, I'm going to like, you know, trot up with a slant. You don't have to shout so much. I'm going to say haughtily and then like pull around to the back. <laughs> a little bent out of shape still. Well, I'd call the Derek over, except the Derek is still laying over the back of the horse. <laughs> with two snowball prints in his back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Of course. Of course. Um... I'll say I'll hop off the horses as soon as you say there's a we have a room for the night. I'll probably uh grab one of our uh rations. Walk up to meet you at the door. Sure, she ushers you inside and um introduces herself. She says, uh, I'm Mother Escher. I've been in these parts for my entire life. I was born in this house here. Um, hoping my grandson would be back. He was, he brought me home earlier and then returned to the village. Um, we were there listening to a young traveling bard. Um, 
he came to town to tell stories and earn coin. He he had a very colorful cloak and tunic, quite a handsome man. Just like the bards from back when I was just a girl, you see. My grandson told me he wanted to tell stories for us, and everyone was happy, and we gathered together in the big barn, and the bard, he he told his stories, but I couldn't tell what they were. You know, my hearing, my hearing's not good like it was. And my grandson, though, he said he would tell me the stories later, after we got home. But it was wonderful sitting there with everyone and hadn't seen such a thing since I was a little when when Kale Gay Graybeard uh, performed at my sister's wedding. Then then the bard paused and, and he hung that really strange, peculiar banner and everything started going wrong after that. So my grandson, he he whisked me away and brought me here. Uh, there seemed to be some kind of rune on it that made people feel strange and some started to cry. Uh, I got very dizzy. Uh, like when I stand up too fast, kind of dizzy, you know, like when you just get up too fast and the world just woo, wobbles a bit. It's kind of how I started feeling. But then the bard started talking again. My grandson told me that it was about some king, um, some king in yellow. And I think that's what he said. Um, everyone was just staring at the bard, listening to the story. And I wish I knew what it was about because they hung on every word. But then they started jumping around and taking off their clothes. And uh, my grandson said that was enough. And he just grabbed me up and ran me out of there. Um, some of them were even running around in the dirt right there in front of everyone. It was quite peculiar. Um, How bizarre. How bizarre. Um, I'm just going to be kind of like waiting on every one of the old lady's words. Um, I think that I have like a lot of reverence for her and her position. And like, you're going to like see like an unusual kind of sweet side of Charlotte as I like kind of like attend to her and her like various needs, whatever they are as like, you know, like, you know, like a lady in waiting when you're like, help them sit down and as they're telling the story, if they gesture to something that they want, I'll be like the first person to like get it for them. But gotcha. kind of, like, yeah, there's a kettle on the fireplace uh she's obviously drinking some kind of hot tea maybe you're keeping her her teacup full for her yeah, yeah. that I kind of that's... thing right yeah. um anyway my my grandson he he got me home but i fear he went back to try to help those poor poor people and perhaps he became like them um I'm, I'm, I fear for him. Please tell me you have good news of Dunover. The people are okay. They're fine, right? It was just a, a spell that that nasty young bard, he must be one of those dark bards and cast upon everyone. And, and surely by now it has expired. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I'm not the one breaking this news. <laughs> I'll take one for the team. Uh, uh, I just I'm already listen. crying over her telling the story though. I'm <laughs> I'm like over there listening to this, and when she asks for news, I'm I'm just crying. I'm just fucking bawling over there. I'm not I'm not I'm not the one telling this. <laughs> and as she's telling the story, I reach into my pocket and I, I um I pull out a a a, a wheel of cheese and I and I carve off a nice a nice wedge of cheese <laughs> and um you know uh distracted in the um in what i was doing so there was a a pause between the end of her uh story and and me carving off the cheese and vaderic picked up on that and uh uh chimed in with what was going on and i take the wedge of cheese and i hand it over to the old lady and go now now here this will help because cheese fixes everything. It does. It really does. Um, she breaks down for a moment, um, but only in a shudder as she was, she already knew, right? It's clear that she knew, but she was hopeful that that couldn't have been. She says, dear, what, what shall I do now? I have no one to care for me. No one to help me. No one to help me here for the, 
the wolves at night or to cut firewood. I have no one now. He was all I had. Might I offer we take you back to the castle, the estate? I'm sure a good word from any of us will land you a healthy, pleasant life there. You would do that for a stranger, an old lady who lives in the woods. Oh, of course. You are you are quite kind, all each and all of you. I feel like feel like I've been saved. Thank you, thank you. Um, please stay for the night. Um, you know the strangest thing. This bard, he spoke in ways I hadn't heard since I was a little girl. Uh, just his rhythm, his cadence. I couldn't really make out the story, but I could tell the tone. And it was definitely the old way of telling a story. And, and what is the old way? Well, there's just a poetic rhythm to telling the story. And only few bard were ever good at telling stories that way. Uh, there was something about it that could draw their audience in, capture their attention, keep them glued. I myself fell to it many times when Kale Greybeard told stories around my village. And what did this bard look like that appeared before, before your village? Oh, Kale Greybeard? And when I was a little girl, he was an old man. He was... Oh, he no, was, this one that appeared before your village now. Oh, he was a young man, early 20s, I would say. Uh, very young. Um, he couldn't have seen 40 winters, for sure. Did it look like Kale? Oh, no, this man was much younger than the Kale I knew when I was a little girl. Kale Greybeard was a, a much older man. He was in his 40s, 50s, 60s even, maybe. And is this your place of residence? This this house? Yes. Well, this is where I was born, and we we keep it here for uh, just getaways when we want to get out of the village. Um, I guess I'll look to the other group. And are are do we stay on our mission, or do we return her right away? You cannot stay here unattended, of course. Now, hear me out. We do the dumb thing. And we split up. Okay. And I bring her back. Yes. Because you <laughs> can't fight for anything. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm down for that. Well, hang on a second. My question would be, um, why do we need to split up? Um, she's old, you, yes. Yes, Do you but... want to bring the grieving old woman to this potentially dangerous village? I just mean oh. she's more dangerous. You know, she's like on nice edge of life and death. That just means she can attack with wild abandon. I and feel like this is an asset that you're ignoring. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Blood out of her jacket. Woo. No, I'm just thinking that she would know. Um... But she's from the other village. All right. This, this is how I'm going to pose it. I'm going to like puff up my chest a little bit, as Charlotte. And I'm going to be like, we are called to suffer great things and to help our fellow man. Sometimes we must do things that we are uncomfortable with. You know your way around these lands even better than our competent uh, tracker <laughs> Videra here. Will you accompany us to the next village to find out what will happen? I, I shall keep you safe the best I can, lady. No, no. I shall keep you safe. And I'll, I'll look to the old lady to see if she'll acknowledge this. Take us up on this. Um, she is hesitant uh looking why can i not stay here is it not safe for me here uh, and what of this taking me back to the castle i do like the sound of that 
oh, that is the that is what we will ultimately do. But we have um, we have a mission. We have business in um, again. The name is 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 oh, no, lost okay. me. The next town over. Oh wait, no, it's beaten. Beaten. We have business in beaten. Um, beaten business um, <clears throat> that we need to um, get to and. Quite frankly, it's been a while since we've been uh, to Beaton, and um, uh, you, perhaps you could uh, show us the beaten path. Oh, and there are such terrible things out there. We cannot possibly imagine leaving you here. They they call, crawled along all fours. They're they're very skin broken out by the. And I'm just gonna like kind of start rambling and crying as I I try to describe it. An obvious wreck. Well, Beaton is a. Beaton's three or four hour uh, travel from here, and then the castle's three or four hours the other way. That would be three, and then whatever business you have, and then four back, that would be seven. Plus, what that would be an entire day worth of just traveling. Oh, I'm an old lady. I don't travel well. Um, <laughs> True, but we have cheese, and I will carve off another slice of cheese <laughs> and hand her the cheese. And your wagon, it, your, your sleigh doesn't look covered it's open and i do get chilled quite easily these days it's cold it's winter um we shall leave you here my lady if that is your desire but let me assure you that it is quite dangerous outside and if we leave you here well we, we cannot guarantee what will happen to you i understand i i shall keep the door the door barred and open it only for the ringing of the bell how about instead, as we both know, the creatures of the night get quite active during these times, we make our own message, so as you do not confuse us for one of these night creatures. Oh, perhaps a secret knock? <laughs> yes. Well, I, oh, I don't hear a knock on the door, though. You'd have to ring the bell a certain number of times. Perhaps three times for the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. Sure, sure, whatever <laughs> makes you happy. Three times it is. When you return, ring the bell three times, and I shall be ready to go. Now it is late, and I must get my sleep so I can get up early and prepare you all a hearty breakfast for your journey tomorrow. <laughs> Um, I, I feel as if I, I might point out, I'm, I'm kind of curious if the rule of three appears in Norse mythology, because I do not know if it, it does. It does not. The rule of three is not as prevalent in Norse mythology as it is in many other mythologies, probably because it's one of the ones that didn't get Christianized as hard. Uh, well, I don't know if the rule of three, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like not very well tracked. I know it appears in uh, uh, more UK based relig uh, pagan religions, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, right. You can be annoyed by my suggestion of three then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this, this little cabin isn't very large. It's just simple, you know, kind of two, two, three room little, little area, a place to, to, Curl up on the floor, the three of you uh, in front of the fire. Um, yeah, because we definitely offer... don't want to head out there at night because that would be a bad idea. So, yeah, she does offer her bed to Lady Charlotte. Um, I couldn't possibly imagine taking it. Um, I will note that I will kind of like sequester the rest of the group and say. Uh, the lady was the only one unaffected by the happenings of the night and of the day. I, I fear that all of us should perchance plug our ears if we do not need them for the given task at hand, especially at night when our dreams may be invaded by evil demons and devils, as it were. Um, and I'm gonna like gonna take some candles and like, you know, soften up some of the earwax and the earwax, the bees wax and shove it in my ear in the demonstration. Uh, 
I will sigh and there's no harm in it. <laughs> I'll join you with that. And I will just take two candles and stuff them in my ears. <laughs> Like a reverse Shrek, you know, when you, you pull the candles yeah. out of the thing, you're just putting them in. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Yeah, and you curl up by the fire, uh, sleeping the night away. It's a quiet night. Um, at times throughout the night, though, you kind of roll over and wake up, and you think you hear rumbles in the distance, like thunder, but more like stone crumbling um and the sun rises in the morning you you get up uh mother esther is already awake and frying up some ham and eggs and uh warming a loaf of bread for you all She prepares you plates of breakfast and a go bag of like wrapped with uh, meats and bread. So you eat and um, prepare for the day. You head out another six inches of snow have fallen. And as you start back on the path, you're riding for another Oh, hour, maybe a third of the way you think to beaten, and you each again see what looks like against the tree line these black buildings, and this time with a road in front of it and a horse drawn carriage, uh, black iron, though. And just as you turn to look squarely at it, it goes away. You, you turn and look kind of sideways and you can catch a glint of what might be there. And then when you look directly at it, it goes away again. Um, so each each one of you, as you see that, go ahead and make me another sanity roll. I know Charlotte's going to be just fine. I passed. I'm so good. You're all okay. Um, somehow you you know that something weird's happening. You just don't know what it is exactly. I feel I feel like it's kind of weird during this time period because it's not like we need to rationalize it away in the same way that a person might today, right? Like if that happened to me, I'd be like, "Oh, there's something wrong with my mind." But I believe in devils and demons and shit. Like I don't, I don't need to rationalize this. This is the real world. Just that I'm being faced with it for the first time in my life. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I'm just gonna take note of it, make certain that everyone else had seen it, and then, uh, like, I, I feel as if Charlotte's like feeling kind of empowered, right? Like, I, I have been called on to be one of God's warriors during this time period. And so, you know, we're going to continue our our travails to this next village to perchance help them, maybe. Yep. And just, just after that vision, the snow begins to fall again, um, and it is quite heavy. The wind is starting to pick up, and the snow falling heavier and heavier the closer you get to Beaton. By the time you arrive, it's, it's visibility maybe 10, 15 feet ahead of you and just driving snow. Mm -hmm. um, I, as we're traveling, I do want the two of them to kind of show me how to use this as a note. Oh, okay. Not, not to change my stats or anything, but mostly to note like maybe like a change in Charlotte's attitude about this whole thing as she becomes like more and more like not possessed by, but like acknowledges the fact that like there's a, something is going to happen here. And she acknowledges that she's like going to have to fight in some capacity. Being completely clueless, <clears throat> I um I ride over to Charlotte and um, I reach into my pocket and I pull out uh, my wheel of cheese and I take out my knife and go, you see the way you use a knife to properly use the knife and I hold the cheese out and 
I carve off this ever, you know, paper thin sliver of cheese. And, you know, it starts to curl up as I, as I carve it off. I say, I say, you see, the trick here is to keep an eye on the blade and not the cheese. And as you carve, look where you're carving to, not carving from. That is the way to properly use a knife. Mm, yes, very wise words, Conrad. I shall watch the knife instead of the target of it. If God deems it so, of course. Well, if you need to cut some cheese. But if you're looking to defend yourself, shall we say, and I, you know, I do a little twirl, twirl, flip, flip with the knife. I go, what you really want to try to do is, and then I, you know, I give some knife pointers. Nice. <laughs> Nice. The pointy knife edge goes where you want. To. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, and I just I just listen pretty attentively. Like this is like the first time you've heard me shut up in a while as I like listen to your pointers. And I take note of that. Yeah. <laughs> right on. And as you're as you get closer to beat, and as you you can tell you're close, you can smell the smoke on the air. Ahead of you on the road appears just a strange sight indeed. This is a carriage unlike anything you have seen before. Uh, not drawn by a horse, but moving on its own accord. It's round and has four wheels like a carriage, but no horses draw it. It's black, shiny, shiny black against the snow. Um, you can make out silhouettes of people inside it <laughs> go ahead and make uh, me another sanity roll for this yeah. phenomenon of you um, I'm so fine I'm, I'm rocking it it's it's just an orb i guess uh. and as as you uh can start to make out buildings in the, in the snow this carriage uh, turns to the left and into the trees and just disappears, kind of fades away. It's quite strange, but there's a lot of weird stuff happening. I, I think I would just like start yelling at it. I would be like, yes, yes, turn, you carriage of the devil. Run in fear from God's warriors. <laughs> nice. Uh, and at long last, you see the village of Beaton through the falling snow. Smoke rising from most of the chimneys, and there are people moving about, chopping wood and carrying bundles, uh, running their errands. While much smaller than Derek's holding in Dunover, Beaton boasts larger and better made buildings. Uh, Conrad, you immediately can smell fresh baked bread. Uh, you can all hear the ringing of a blacksmith's hammer and see children playing in the snow. You are somewhat relieved your hearts are lifted for after the horrors you've experienced in the last two villages it is good to come to a place of normalcy perhaps the horrors haven't reached this village just yet mm -hmm. i want to like as we approach it and i see it's normal um I'm going to like immediately like gesture for us to halt and I'm going to, I'm going to get off my horse and I'm going to start making myself look normal. Like I, I imagine I'm a little bit fucked up at this point, right? Like, you know, hair everywhere, my dress is askew and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take, a, I'm going to take a couple minutes and I'm going to get my shit together before we enter this village because I have to look reputable <laughs> you have to look like a lady <laughs> of the times yeah dressed in your yuletide finest yes yes my yuletide finest yes and as you um as you make yourselves presentable and kind of lead the horses in to beaten um i don't know if it needs to be noted i'm sorry to interrupt but um i i did retain the earplugs that we had at least Okay. At that one event. I, I, I do want to keep those on us, even though we're not like using it while we're traveling at the current minute. I I'm like 
going to be a little bit of a pest and be like, no, you guys need to carry these with us. We might encounter this bard again. If you hear any music, put these in your ear. And mine are like very easily accessible on me. Right on. All right. I was like, oh man, he's going to start monologuing about music and I'm going to have to be like, oh wait, no. I <laughs> no, no monologuing here. I don't do that. Um, <laughs> So as you as you heading <laughs> leading <laughs> leading the horses into the uh into the village, um a man strides out to meet you. He welcomes you, introducing himself as Bannon. He is the uh kind of village headman. I'm gonna I'm Bannon, Bannon. Oh, it is such a pleasure. Could you help me off my horse here? I I, I wish to my pride about means this, this dress is only so fit for wear of course lady please uh and and he will extend a hand to help you off the horse is i'm gonna i'm gonna like fall off the horse and like like kind of like lean into falling into his arms a little bit like a little damsel <laughs> yeah little. right on yeah he uh lashing a little ankle yeah, well, flashing a, a big smile as I kind of like fall in, like, oh, yes, thank you for catching me, sort of. But yeah, he's able to catch you quite easily and, and stand you up. Says, there, there, lady, uh, a long day in the saddle might make your legs weak. Perhaps we should uh, retire to my, my home and we can sit and talk about your travel. Where is it that you come from? You would not believe what we've seen. I'm I'm so glad that we are to be in the strong embrace of your town and well your arms and I hope that you will take heed of our word of what we have seen and perhaps that we can help one another. Yes, please do lead us to your your, your house. Absolutely, please. Um, you look as if you may be uh, from the castle of Lord Boniface as he sent to gather us for the Yuletide celebration. And he kind of is leading you on and just striking conversation. Uh, I, 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 I like don't want to dominate this, but just imagine that I'm kind of like adding in like snippets in kind of like a like flirtatious sort of way as I like look to the Derek and Conrad because I a little bit like acknowledge my role in all of this and I want them to explain the, like the brass tacks of what's happening here. So to either Vaderic or Conrad to kind of take the point of, of explaining what's happening. Um, <clears throat> just as a quick reminder, we uh, came with um, some gifts and we were supposed to meet or track down whom here? Um, the village headman and provide the gifts. <clears throat> so I will um, um, I will be rooting around in the back of the sleigh for said uh, said gifts and tides and um, allow Vidaric to uh, take the lead on the uh, the old explanation of what it is that we are doing and why we're here. <laughs> And what's been happening <laughs> most importantly <laughs> well um uh, yes and no yes we are here on behalf of lord boniface however we are here for a much more upsetting reason local towns about seem to have fallen victims to some sort of magic demons, whatever you wish to call it. It seems to be, at least from what we gather, of a bard um, entering these towns and spinning tales that seem to drive these people to terrible ends. And we were here to come see if it had reached you yet. But Oh dear heavens! Ah! Oh. Speak nothing more on the streets. We may spook the villagers. Please, quickly, inside, we shall talk about this more. This is quite concerning. I'm so glad you have brought this to my attention. Oh, yes. Um, yes, let us uh, let let us hurry inside and sit and talk more about this. As you are going through the streets, more and more people 
are um, kind of gathering on the street sides. And you realize that the sleigh that you're in has the seal of Lord Boniface emblazoned on it. And some of these children, uh, Lady Charlotte, as you walk by, the, the young girls, they curtsy to you. Yeah, as they should. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but, as they should. But, yeah, but you're you're clearly a noble lady, and um, you are maybe out of place here. It looks like you are definitely of a higher class than than the people in this village, and they yeah. recognize it and know their place apparently. Just as a, I'm gonna I'm gonna be like very gracious about it and like returning like like nods which I know is like more of an acknowledgement than they would normally get of somebody from my class. Um, I'm not gonna like be over the top about it in terms of like, oh yes, I shall return their bows with bows of my own. But like that sort of like gracious gesture that would be appropriate, but more than necessary um, for this time. Gotcha, yeah. Like, yeah. like a, like a nod, nod of acknowledgement instead of like that sort of haughty, oh yes, of course you should bow to me sort of attitude. Right. Yep. Some of the, the teenage girls, they, they giggle a bit when you do that and kind of, you can hear them whispering and like, Oh my God, she nodded at me. You know, that kind of, <laughs> like they're all giddy about it. Like they're dirty faces, but you can see they're smiling and that you have brought joy to their day for sure. Yeah. And seeing, then, seeing this, I'll take a moment and um, carve off little slivers of cheese and hand it out to the to the girls as they titter. <clears throat> Handing out cheese to the peasants. Oh my God, Conrad. <laughs> have you no shame? Go too shame? far, too far by half. <laughs> you have no shame at all. Here, my just, child. Uh, Take, I eat, just... for this is his body. I can just oh see Conrad God. passing out the sacraments. As... <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Fantastic. As you get to the house, the, the the door opens. There's a blazing warm fire inside, a table. Uh, he offers you seats. Uh, he he waves at some folks to bring forth drink and, and, and food to feed the guests. You present the I'm gifts. Gonna, I was going to say, I'm going to keep emphasizing how uh, much safer I feel in this place and it just kind of make comments. Oh, your, your building is so much stronger than that which you saw in the next. And I'm really like, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm trying to emphasize how scared I actually, I am really scared, but like I'm trying to do it in this sort of portly way of, oh yes, your house is well built. I'm so glad. I'm like trying to like really give that chivalric sort of attitude that's appropriate for the time in terms of like I'm trying to like couch my fear in this sort of like, performance of femininity yeah. i'm like a courtly woman and i'm trying to make it clear what my fear is but it still has to be like performed in this very particular way sure um because i want him to take us seriously because we're about to be like yeah magic like there's fucking people running around with claw hands and shit <laughs> so i have to like kind of butter him up about this whole thing yeah right and and he soaks it in. He takes it in. And oh, you are much too gracious, uh, my lady. Please, uh, it is but a simple home, and you know, kind of being very humble about it all. Um, the, the Derek just in the background making like a stink face. Like, why can't she be like that with me? Sort of, <laughs> just like rubbing his like eyes like this. Like, oh my god, this damn kiss up. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, Vaderic may even look at you a little bit and wipe the end of his nose as he looks at you like, you have something there, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> he, you begin to tell him the stories of what's happened, uh, I suppose, and he claims that, hey, hey no, nobody's been here. Uh, we're, as you can see, perfectly normal and no, no harm in this village, uh, although we will now uh, bolster our city watch. Um, you know, not long ago, there was a strange man seen lurking in the woods out by the old hunting shack. Um, 
We haven't seen him in a few days, but he never came to the village. He'd just kind of lurk on the edges of the of the trees. We thought maybe he was a hunter from one of the other villages, or sometimes we'll get nomads that roll through here, and we didn't give it much thought, but you say there's this traveling bard. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if it was him. Maybe perhaps he was scoping us out. Good thing we have a good watch here. Uh, yes, absolutely. We're a safe village. Promise you that. Um, you know what we should do? We should celebrate this visit from Lord Boniface's emissaries with a feast. For the, the storm I fear shall set in this night, and you will not be able to travel home. We should throw a feast in your honor and in the honor of his lord, the Boniface, uh, bringing us these fine gifts to help us celebrate the Yuletide in his name. So shall we shall we call forth the feast? I, I can have it prepared quickly. Um, what time of day is it yeah. about right now? Um, it's midday, probably. Yeah, about four hours you left after sunup. It's winter. Four hours would put you about midday right now. Okay. I'm gonna, I, I have, I have kind of a stance I want to take on this, but if somebody else wants to, but Derek, do you have a certain line that you want to take this or? Uh, the only thing I was thinking was maybe trying to go pick up the old lady, but I don't know if we'll have time to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look to yeah yeah while while you consider doing that I'm gonna actually advocate for us not celebrating so I'm gonna I'm gonna look to the leader the headmaster is that his name just the village headman head, uh, uh, what's his name Benton I think is that Bannon Bannon B Bannon I I appreciate the gesture so much but it cannot sit in my Christian heart that we should celebrate when such great loss of life has occurred. And as you mentioned, you have such a great watch. I would, I would hate to distract them during this time of great upheaval and potential danger. I think that we shouldn't host a feast. I, I, you know, I, I might be a little bit forward. And instead, I think that we should observe a sort of quiet reverence for the, for the lives that have been lost and give the, the appropriate space and time for your, your guards to keep us safe. They are the true ones that we should be celebrating this this time, and we should do so by allowing them to do their job. Yeah, make me a uh, fast talk or persuade on that, actually. We haven't I done a lot of rolling in this session. No, we roll haven't. Roll, play, roll, play. Um, let me check here. I got, I, got, I, thought I got one of those good here. I think you have one of those pretty good. <laughs> Your choice. All right. Charm. How about charm? Yeah, we could use charm. All of those are kind of along the same line. I got a 57 on 60. All right, so you passed. Um, he's moved by your sentiment for the loss of life. And he says, you know, it, it may be a good idea. Perhaps we should observe a moment or two of silence. But still, it is been quite some time since Lord Boniface has sent a gift. Uh, perhaps not a large feast then. Perhaps something small. Perhaps. Just there's, just there's stories dinner. of Saint Nicholas and uh, distributing gifts. Maybe uh, perchance you and and us together can act as this Saint Nicholas and distribute some of these gifts to the uh, townsfolk so that they might remain in their houses. You know. And everyone might remain safe when we can achieve both goals. You are as wise as you are beautiful, Lady Charlotte. This is just quite the magnificent idea. Uh, you know, one day you may very well uh, have some some court of your own in this kingdom. Um I'm just going to like, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, blush and be like, oh no. <laughs> Here's how I see it then. We shall have the feast made, but instead of gathering in the town hall as we normally would, we shall bring the feast door to door, serving 
to those less fortunate than us and sharing our wealth with them. What say you? Is that a Christian way to do things? Verily. Fill their bellies with joy and ox meat. Oh, oh, not in rapid agreement. And I, I think like maybe only viewable by um, Conrad or Vederic, who's been with me a little bit. Like Charlotte's like really terrified, but in that kind of like reserved type way that's only viewable by like people that like actually know her. Like she's really afraid and just like trying her best to steer this in a direction that won't lead to bad outcomes. But she knows that she can't just be like, you need to do this and like, She's just like, she's white knuckling through this, <laughs> which is like counterpointed maybe by like, you know, it's like a really happy tone to this conversation. But like for Charlotte, it's like, she's white knuckling this. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just uh, step up and say, well, the lady has traveled quite far. We've seen many things. Perhaps me and Conrad can take ahead with this and distribute these gifts and let the lady rest. If that is uh, what you would like to do, I would have no problem with that. Uh, um, Lady Charlotte, is, do, you, do you require some rest? I know that the road has been a, a difficult one, apparently, from your stories of horrors that you have seen. That's quite horrible, actually. Um, I'm very glad nothing like that has happened here, that we have not yet been visited by this, this bard, you say? Yes. Well, yes, I I shall take some respite, but I, I shall be close at hand, to say the least. Very well. And he raises his glass, or his goblet, not his glass, his goblet, his pewter goblet. You each have one there. Uh, they, they tried to shine them, but it's pewter, so they just kind of wiped <laughs> it off, you know, <laughs> rubbed a little bit of the uh, tarnish off. Uh, he raises his goblet and says, then a toast. A toast to Lord Boniface and his noble emissaries. I welcome you, wish you health, and drink with you. Hear, hear. And he he tips back his uh, his goblet, downing what is inside. He sends out word I, to I say, gather. Here, here, there's like this like like scene maybe like you can kind of just see me in the background. Like, everyone takes their drink, and, like, Charlotte's the last one to put theirs down. <laughs> we'll say. Like, anything happen to anybody oh, else? Oh, no? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, he sends message out to the uh, to the village to for the chef and whatnot to gather to, to go ahead and start cooking the feast and uh, gathering the gifts to be Oh, excuse me, to be sent out. It's, uh, there are only about nine or ten houses in this village, so it won't take long to distribute the gifts. As those get um, brought to Bannon's house, uh, Verdick and Conrad are there, and he, he gets you all ready. Of course, he has uh, some young page boys that will be actually carrying the gifts and you all will just be, you know, handing them to the villagers and giving them the blessing of Lord Boniface. And, you know, uh, Lady Charlotte would, would um, require you to give them the blessing of, of the Lord almighty as well. Um, of course, Verdict will scoff at that. And, <laughs> but um, yeah, as, you go through the town, everyone you meet is normal and happy, and this doesn't look anything like the towns that you've been to yet. In fact, there's music coming from some of the houses. Uh, there are smells of, of different foods. As you give people food, they're like, oh, well, here, take some of ours, you know, and, and it's it's one of those very open, friendly villages. And you make it through giving the gifts to everyone. Uh, is there anything in particular you would like to do while doing that? Um, it's a pretty routine 
thing, Conrad, this might be your first time acting as a um, emissary, as it were. Um, <clears throat> yes, and uh, indeed it is. But um, uh, I, on more than one occasion, have been called upon to carry the um, the gifts that are are bestowed upon <clears throat> those less fortunate. And um, so I, I I am familiar with the process. Um, and in fact, uh, catch myself as I, you know, reach down to pick up a large parcel of, of the gifts to carry uh, on. And um, uh, uh, I get a tap on my shoulder and, and a point to the, uh, the little page boy there. And, uh, you know, I set, I set down and, you know, four or five of them come by and pick up the things that I had, had set down to, to carry. Um, recognizing that I'd uh, <clears throat> made a bit of a social faux pas. Oh, 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 okay. I, I'm, I'm playing this role now. Not, ah, I get it. Okay. Um, now, gosh, what did my uncle used to do? How did that go again? Um, and I go through the motions and, and, uh, you know, I, I, I reach into my pocket and I pull out my small cross on a chain and, you know, I do the blessing um, accordingly and, um, and such, of course, uh, did not, uh, <clears throat> not taking any of the food offered, um, though it smells delicious. And it is my, uh, it is my time to, uh, uh, you know, stomach growling and things like that. But recognizing the the discipline that is necessary for the mission at hand um all the while taking note of the guard and guard watch and um and uh, what the uh um the defensive capabilities are of this uh of this village yep the uh the defenses of the village are pretty good uh they are uh keeping a roaming patrol throughout the main two streets and, and around the perimeter. So one will go up one street around the perimeter and, you know, kind of this figure eight pattern of, uh, and, and there are alternate directions. So. So there should be a well-worn path in the snow. Oh yeah. A well-worn path in the snow for sure. Um, let's see. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. Yep, yep, yep. And as the as the gift giving is winds down, you get to the last home and um, give out the last of the gifts. You return back to uh, Benton's house, and he says, "I have just the place for you all to stay the night. Um, the snow is falling very heavily outside. It's." quite the storm is starting to, to brew, you can tell. And he says, it's, there's no way you can make it back to the castle in this tonight. So please be my guest to stay here and we shall make sure that you are taken care of and prepared for the morning. Um, your horses shall be tacked and boarded in, in the barn and we'll make sure that the sleigh is tended to the, the rails polished by morning. And he um, shows you each to uh, the the houses. Please make yourself at home. Any room you choose. Um, before we uh, before we break off, I'm going to um, ask uh, Lord Benton if he would, or uh, sorry, not Lord Benton, but um, Sir Benton, if he would tell us about um, uh, the stories that he knows of um, uh, Kale Graybeard. And uh, um, say that we've we have heard several stories so far among, uh, along this trip, and we are curious to find out what uh, was his, what his understanding and experiences were um, <clears throat> of Kale himself. Oh, Kale Graybeard is a name I haven't heard in many years. Uh, I believe he's an old man now. Um, in he's still here in the kingdom, I think. He, he was in the village um, and from what I understand, had not long left to live. He was pretty much just bedridden and he could have already perished as far as I know. 
Uh, he was quite the old man. I, I never did get to see him perform myself. Of course, I heard stories, but um, they, they were never the same uh, told again. Uh, people would always say, oh, you can't tell it like Kale when others would retell the story. Though the stories were entertaining, apparently they lacked something that Kale brought to them. Uh, it was it would always one of my hopes that I could get to see him perform, but those days those days are far behind us now. I'm I'm afraid. One of those things that I just will have to accept. I'll never get to see. Thank you, thank you indeed for <clears throat> for uh, for that story. It is it is enlightening and it um, matches quite closely. Um, those stories that we've heard in other places. Ah, yes. Well, he is getting old and, you know, I'm not sure there's too many people left alive today that would have ever seen him perform. He's got to be nearing a hundred. A hundred is a lot of years. Indeed, indeed. So they say he, he would live as long as the silver oak stood. Interesting. Well, uh, let's hope that Silver Oak stands for quite some time. Indeed, let's. Um, is there anything you all require before I retire? I have an early morning. Another wheel of cheese would be Greatly appreciated. I'm running quite low on my supplies. Absolutely. I only have th three wheels left. Well, my sure. man is absolutely bricked up. He has <laughs> he has yeah. not passed in, in days. days. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The there is um, leftover roast pork and ox stew with vegetables, <laughs> sausage, bread, everything uh, here as well. You he's, can he's, of, got, he's got gout. He's like 21 and has gout at this point. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, be honest. Most of us have gout. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Are, are any of you going to eat uh, the ox stew or roast pork or anything um, of the food? Are you all going to partake in the meal now that you're out of the sight of the, of the village and Obviously, suspicious that you should ask us to specifically say that we are, but I will be eating it. But I'm suspicious that you're asking me. <laughs> you should be suspicious when anyone says, "Are you going to eat this thing?" No, yeah. um, it's quite delicious, actually. Um, uh, I bet it fucking is. Your last meal normally is, yeah. <laughs> gonna fucking fool me. We hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Ripples from Carcosa. If you did. Leave us a like by hitting the thumbs up button. And you can also subscribe to the channel to see this and all the games that we play on United Adventure Company. Until next time, thanks for watching, and we'll see you around.